So if you missed last week, here's the landscape that was presented in terms of uh, where impact investing is. So uh, Wall Street style investing, maximizing returns is top left corner, right? Maximal return, don't care about impact. Uh, philanthropy's bottom right corner, want to maximize impact, don't care about returns. Impact investing is everything in between. So you don't know enough about those three companies that Rachel just showed you, but they show up somewhere in this green space. Right, depending on uh, you know on how they're balancing uh, the amount of impact they're aiming for versus the the amount of money, not necessarily that they're trying to make as an organization, but the amount of money that they've promised back to their investors. There's a difference, and so let's jump in there. Let's take this same landscape, and let's just say, okay, where does the company sit in this landscape? The company itself. So in this landscape, now we have the for profits in the upper left corner. Right, maximizing their return on, on their investments. Uh, and in the traditional case, not caring about impact. Uh, and the nonprofits are down in the right corner, trying to maximize impact and not trying to make any money. Well, that's kind of the old view. That's the view that a lot of people have of for-profits and nonprofits, that they are that, that vastly separated. But the reality is this, the reality is that for-profits do a whole lot of different things and nonprofits do a whole lot of different things and they overlap. Uh, the nonprofit space is actually bigger than this. If we include the hospitals, if we include uh, uh, in the US some of the insurance companies, uh, if we in include the university systems, yeah, you know, there's a lot of nonprofits sitting up in this corner that make a huge amount of money. But if we're just talking about operational uh, organizations you could potentially invest in, well, then this is a pretty good map. Right, so there are nonprofits that do break even. There are nonprofits that make money, but still try and maximize their impact. That's this corner over here. Uh, and there are for-profits that are not out to make a profit. There are companies that have just decided that uh, the best form of uh, organization for them is a for-profit or a partnership or something in the form that's not a, a tax-free, not-for-profit uh, not company. Uh, it's, it gets com complicated. So when it comes to how do you invest in these companies, again, we didn't. We got three example companies uh, a few minutes ago, but we don't know how. What form of of structure are we allowed to invest in those companies if if we want to? It's different between for profits and nonprofits. On the for profit side, traditionally in early stage, the normal way to invest is equity, equity as in buying shares, owning owning part of the company. But in uh, emerging markets in Africa. It's extremely common to see debt investing, despite the fact that it's uh, it's highly risky. Uh, so we see debt investment. And then the third choice, which we'll see in another week, uh, is revenue share. And then on the nonprofit side, they can't sell equity because there are no shares. There's an, an alternative form of investing uh, in the nonprofit space. It's called recoverable grants. Uh, it seems to be getting more and more popular. A recoverable grant can look like equity, can look like debt, it can look like anything. Uh, but it's basically you're giving them money, but they're promising to give it back to you at some point uh, on some trigger in some form, maybe more than you gave them. Uh, you can also lend to nonprofits and you can do revenue share with nonprofits that have revenues. So you know, there's a lot of overlap here uh, and it gets more complicated because there are organizations out there that call themselves hybrids and hybrid is that whole green section that's overlapping here. And so then you have a company that may in fact be two companies or you may have a company that, that's multiple pieces. Uh, and so this shows up in multiple forms as well. Uh, really quickly on the for-profit side, it shows up as either a philanthropic investment. So it's possible to take philanthropic dollars and use them to invest in for-profits. That sounds a little strange, uh, but my nonprofit, that's what we do. That's what we specialize in doing. And the other one is called fiscal sponsorship. It is legal to donate to a nonprofit and then have that nonprofit give most of the money to the for-profit to do the work. And you'd think that shouldn't be legal, but it is because if you find a for-profit that's fulfilling the mission of the nonprofit, they can go pay for that. Just like they can go pay for rent and salaries and whatnot as a nonprofit. They got to pay for things to get done. They can pay a for-profit to get their, their impact done. In this world where for-profits have an impact, they can do the work for nonprofits. Uh, and then the other hybrid structure we see on the nonprofit side is when the nonprofit has a for-profit subsidiary. So a lot of the funds in Africa 
They look like funds, they act like funds, but they're actually run by nonprofits. Uh, Global Partnerships is a good example of this. Uh, the, the parent organization is a nonprofit and they have a for-profit subsidiary that does investing in Africa. And there's a, a, dozens of others like that. Takeaways, three takeaways is impact investing is not one thing. It's a landscape of choices. You should also take away the fact that it is just really complicated. And we're just at the top level. It just gets more complicated the further you dive in. But what also pops out of that is that everything's investable. No matter how people are doing their impact, as long as they're they're selling something to a customer, there's an investment to be made there. And so whatever your your particular desire is in terms of impacts, there's probably an org out there and and there's probably one that's looking for, for money as well.